initializing, doing its system checks. And then after that, we are going to check its photometric accuracy. We are not calibrating this instrument because it is calibrated at the factory. Several of our instruments last summer had to go to Madison to be calibrated and clean, and that's what these labels are on here for. So we are not actually calibrating these. We are just going to check for accuracy once it's done warming up. So for our lab, we are using these standards that are in a box, and they look like this. We are going to check our photometric accuracy using the 9.2 and the 50.9. We have three other boxes of standards and they're all just a little bit different, so that meant I had to make a new instruction sheet here of verifying the photometric accuracy. They all have different transmittance standards, so and I put down the acceptable range for those. So, first thing we do Set the wavelength to 590 and make sure it's on the percent transmittance, which it is at percent transmittance and it's at 590. If we need to change it, we just hit the set NM and then we type in 590, enter, and there it is. So what we're going to do is make sure the holder is empty, close lid, and press measure blank. So we can lift this up. We're looking right here, there's nothing in there. Then we go over here, hit measure blank. All right, at 100%. The next thing we're going to take is the lower standard, which is a 9.2 in this box, and we're going to put it in and close the lid. I've been putting it in with the glass facing front. That was a 9.2, so our value should be between 8.7 and 9.7. There, very good. That passed. Now we're going to take this one out. We're going to put in the higher standard. We're going to put in the 50.9. As you see, 50.9% transmittance should be reading between 48.4 and 53.4. And we are very good. The acceptable ranges we came up with on our own just for our lab. It'll probably be a lot tighter where we work in the future.